everybody, Gina DeLuca here. All right, I'm very honored to be part of this collaboration with Nate's Art Lab. Um, I met Nate at the Fluid Art Experience last year and I suffer from anxiety and it's very hard for me to be in new places uh, with new people when I don't know anyone and it was a um, quite an overwhelming experience and Nate <laughs> recognized that I was having some anxiety issues and he was my emotional support animal for the entire weekend and I am so grateful to him for that and will be uh, for all eternity. Uh, <laughs> and I will say that it has gotten a lot better. I have been doing a lot of work on the anxiety thing. That weekend was actually kind of a wake up call where it was just like, oh, this is actually pretty bad. I need to do something about this. So I did. And uh, therapy is a wonderful thing. There's no shame in it. And if you need it, go get some. All right, <laughs> that being said, my PSA, uh, this collaboration is about getting cells. When I first started this art form, the two ways to get cells were by using uh, density of the paints and that would not require any kind of additive. That is the Rayleigh Taylor instability in action. That is using the specific gravity of paints where you would put the heaviest paint on top and that would sink and give you lacing. The other way is to add silicone or some other kind of additive that has a hydrophobic effect, Rain-X, silicone. Um, those are probably the big two. And anything that's, that pushes water away, that is hydrophobic. In 2018, I discovered um, by accident, I had mixed my paints too thin uh, on purpose, kind of, I was doing a big piece and I was planning on painting a portrait over top of it, doing some brushwork, and I just wanted a gradient of colors. And what happened was, I guess what people call a pearl pour today, I called them pop-up cells back then. And then the next painting I did, um, it was the yellow, the cadmium yellow light hue by Liquitex Basics that selled. The next painting that I did, my torch broke uh, and it sat for probably about seven minutes before I tilted. And that was the first time, as far as I know, that boulder cells happened. And then I was like, well, I guess I need to come up with a name for this. And I named it the straight four. I called it that because there were no additives in it. It wasn't necessarily that I was just pouring straight out of the cup. Uh, it was more about the fact that it wasn't, uh, it, it didn't include any additives. So what I noticed when those paintings dried was that the mats, the, the paint, the, I'm sorry, the cells were more matte than the background. So the cadmium yellow light hue dried matte. Even though I was using all Liquitex Basics paints, that one paint dried matte. And then I looked at the other painting and again, it was the yellow, it was matte. Those were, the, the cells looked matte. So then I started on my scientific journey of figuring out which paints I had that dried matte, which ones were glossy and started experimenting. And sure enough, when I mixed my paints thin enough and I used matte paints and glossy paints together, and it doesn't have to be glossy, it just has to be glossier than your matte paints, I would get cells without using any kind of silicone and I would get amazing patterns of cells. So that, uh, that was the birth of the straight pour. I can't say that nobody discovered it before me, but I think I'm pretty sure that I was the first one on YouTube. So nobody had advertised it <laughs> or shared that technique if they discovered it before me. All right, so the colors I'm using today, I have Amsterdam acrylics and turquoise green. 
Deco Art Metallics in copper and in 24 karat gold. And I also have this little piggy pigment in Persephone. I am absolutely in love with this color. Um, it glows on a painting and sometimes it blends with the cell makers and you get some really cool effects from that. These paints have been mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol. That mixture is then thinned with water. I use distilled water until I get the consistency that I'm looking for, which is about a two on my consistency scale. It is making a mound, but it disappears quickly. I have a nice, thin, even stream coming off of my stick. If the stream is not even, that means your consistency is inconsistent and you need to keep mixing. That will cause you problems in your painting. Parts will move faster than others and that's not desired. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards. Each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that gives you all of the information that you need. The exact paint, brand, color, consistency, the recipe, of course, how to do the technique, all of the things that I can't fit onto a card. This is a picture of the painting in that video. This box contains a tip for this technique. And here at the bottom, you have the color palette that was used in this painting. And these two boxes can be used as the basis of a two color palette, or you can build off of those colors. And there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors. Mix and match the bonus pa color palette cards with the technique cards, and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, GinaDeLuca.net, and also at Amazon.com. The first thing I'm going to do is put some paint in a cup. I want to make sure that I have enough paint to react with my cell makers. The cell makers being the Deco Arc paints. Oh, I guess I should tell you how I mixed the piggies because uh, that's important. Sorry, I forgot about that. To mix the piggies, I put some Joe Sonia in the bottom of the cup, just enough to cover the bottom. Added the pigment. Wear a mask when you do this, super important. The pigments are very, very fine and uh, they do float around. Sometimes it'll puff when you put it in the cup. When you have studio lights, you can see it floating in the air. Uh, if you don't have studio lights, you might not notice it, but if it gets in your lungs, it's not coming out. That is just how it is, and you don't want that. So always, always wear a mask when you're mixing pigments. So I... So I mix the pigment with the Josonia and then I add the Tri-Art Matte Modeling Paste. I mix enough of that in there until it has the consistency of tube paste or tube paint. And then I add the Floetrol and mix it like a regular paint. You'll notice I've already covered my edges. Uh, I do that because I mix my paint thin and I use Floetrol. That is not the greatest combination for good coverage on your sides, but it does make for a magnificent straight pour. So I cover the edges first so I don't have to worry about it later. Troubleshoot before there's trouble. That's what I always say. All right, time to put some paint in a cup. Always check your consistency before adding it to your cup. The sauce may thicken upon standing. I'm going to start with the pigment. Now 
And now for the copper. And these pigments, because they're mixed with Floetrol, um, they will dry way more vibrant than how it looks in the cup. Floetrol kind of has a milky color. Pouring from up high, I want these paints to sink and churn. A lot of times, the last color, the last cell maker that I add, a bit of that ends up at the bottom of my cup. I kind of poured that one a little funny, so we'll see if it happens this time. And I'm just going to add enough of this paint to cover this, the paints that came to the top. I want all of those paints to have a chance to react going to make sure that my canvas is centered as I will be doing a spiral. Okay, I am going to try my best to stay in the center My spinner is catching on something. I'm going to have to figure this out before my next painting for sure. I can see that Persephone blending with the copper. That's fun. Ah, here comes the gold, it did work. Okay, beautiful. So as I get towards the end of the cup, I get closer to the canvas and I spin slower. This is going to give me better control. The center is very important because that is the part that's going to get stretched the most. And that's going to be the focal point. So I do my best to make that look nice. Right, 10 on the dismount. Heck yeah. I already love what's going on here. These colors, even if all of this gets spun off, this is the focal point and these colors are amazing. So remember when I said, sometimes the coolest stuff happens on the edges. Look at what, what's happening on these edges here. You get some really cool cells using a background color, I mean a base coat color that matches your background color. That leaves me the option of doing a negative space piece. If I wanted to just pull all of this to one side and really expose that, I could do that not doing that here because that centers I'm really happy with what's happening in that center there. So, next. Popping the bubbles. Oh, it started the first time. Look at that. What is going to happen here? As I pop these bubbles, some of the bubbles are lying in the underlying layers of paint. So you can see in this... Uh, turquoise here, I have some copper popping up. When I'm popping the bubbles from an underlying layer, it brings some of that paint with it. 
which is why I don't use white as my background. But because these matte paints have a hydrophobic effect, little bit a little bit not perfect spiral going on here it might be a little oblong okay that's all right my spinner was catching could be some dried paint down there could be a piece of tape who knows um still gonna be pretty not worried but as these little bits of the deco art paints come up it has a hydrophobic effect. It's going to push that turquoise away. Being patient is really, really important here. Allow these cells to develop before you stretch the painting and that will give you amazing, beautiful 3D boulder cells. That was you know, discovered by mistake because my torch broke and I was trying to fix it in the other room and I came back and it was just <laughs> nothing but cells in the puddle. And I was like, oh my gosh, what was that? What happened? How did that happen? Began my obsession. What is that catching on? I'm just making sure that my center is in the center. Whatever else happens, I can deal with it, but I definitely want to make sure that my center is centered. I'm only obsessive about that on round and square pieces. Sometimes I'll go off center on a square piece, but uh, I use the rule of thirds whenever I'm doing something rectangular, but on, round pieces on my spirals. I really like for my center to be in the center. Got some beautiful cell action going on here. I'm going to give another pop. I'm not going to pop anything in here. I like what's going on there. I don't need anything else, but I'm going to go around this perimeter. Although, I'm happy with that uh, turquoise showing through. I might actually be ready to spin. Sometimes I let these sit for as long as seven minutes. Um, the longer I let this sit, the bigger these cells get before I stretch. And that means the bigger they will be after I stretch. Okay, I am going to take some of my leftover paint here. I can see my corners can use a little love. And you also want to make sure that your sides have not set up on you. So I'm actually gonna just put a little bit there. And I'm going to touch up these sides. If your sides start to set up a little bit, like if you start to see the texture of the canvas, that's kind of how you know it's starting to set up. The paints won't slide off evenly it will resist. So if you have a dry spot on your side, it will hinder the smooth transition over the side. Okay, just touching these corners up.
There are a lot of little steps that you can take to make your painting go as smooth as possible. The more you do it, the more you realize that uh, troubleshooting before there's trouble will save you a lot of headaches. Okay, I think, I think we're all juiced up here. All right, let's give this baby a spin. It's already starting to work its way off. Um, hmm. This side looks like it's going to probably give me the most trouble. So I'm actually going to slide the canvas in that direction just a little bit. And it's like when you're at the playground and you're on that carousel thing, uh, if you're in the center, you don't get pulled as much, but if you are on the edge, you get pulled. Sometimes you feel like you're going to fly off of the thing. So kind of the same concept here, using the centrifugal force to help spin. I do hope I get to keep some of that Persephone. I am using a new new jars of gold and copper and they are really taking over. They sure are. The French jars are really powerful. <laughs> okay. I'm going to recenter this now. And you do not have to spin fast. It will get there. If you've ever had a painting that was not level, okay, I'm going to push it in this direction a little bit. If you've ever had a painting that wasn't level, you know how much it can move overnight very slowly. take some of what is left in my pouring cup and zhuzh up these corners a little bit. Once I spin this, it will actually look like it was part of the pour. It will incorporate itself. Okay. One more spin here. Okay, I don't want to spin this anymore because I don't want to lose these cells. I'm going to leave it alone. What I am going to do is just take up some of these drippings and just touch the corners.
just the very, very corner. You don't have to spin it until it's fully covered. If you have corners showing, you can touch them up manually. Okay. I am going to let this sit and do what it's going to do. It can change quite a bit as it sits. We'll see what happens. And I'll bring you in for a close-up. Back in a few. Okay, here it is. This has been sitting for a while. I don't expect any more changes as far as cells go. Um, you can see some of the Persephone starting to pop out in the area that dried there. Lots of bling. So much bling. You can... A lot of that Persephone got swallowed up, but I don't think it's necessarily gone forever. It has a funny way of showing up as it starts to dry, so you can kind of see it on this side there. So perhaps when this dries, I will have more of that peeking through. I think maybe kind of see it trying to poke through there and as I said once it dries and it's in there as well once it dries it's much bolder than it is when it's wet so it may show through more than it is right now but some very cool cells multicolored got some 3d effect going on there that gold really spread out if you remember how small that spiral was when we started that blue showing through is giving it a lovely glow but there it is i hope you learned something i hope you enjoyed if you did, please do like and share and subscribe. Uh, sharing is really important to creators. It helps get us out to a whole new audience, and that is greatly appreciated. Check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined. Always greatly appreciate it. Certainly not expected. You'll also find a link to my website, GinaDeLuca.net, where you can find my art and music and fluid art inspiration cards for sale. You'll find a link to my affiliates, DecoArt being one of them, and Fluid Art Company, where I got the Amsterdam and the Persephone, the, this little piggy pigments. Uh, you'll find the links there in... The description box and sometimes you find coupon codes there too so do check that out also in the description box you will find the link to my facebook group go make some art join us there post your masterpieces ask your questions get some inspiration a good time is had by most it is the internet after all feel like I'm forgetting something. I usually do. I usually do forget something here at the end. But I think that's it. Let us call that it. Thank you again, Nate Bright, for asking me to do this collab with you. And uh, I hope you all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art. <laughs>